Hello viewers, thank you once again for tuning in. I'm your host, Spotter Fred, and we want to continue doing what we like doing most. Now friends, what we have been doing now today, we want to introduce a new topic. We want to look at capital budgeting under, under inflation. Capital budgeting. Under conditions of inflation. No, inflation is simply a general increase in prices and a decline in the purchasing power of the customers, that's of uh, individuals. That's simply the inflation. Now, it, uh, it, as I've said, it refers to either general increase in prices or a general decline in purchasing power of money. The general effect of inflation in capital budgeting includes one, Revenue tend to increase in money terms. Two, costs, expenses also tend to increase in money terms. Then three, the cost of capital, the required rate of return, uh, must be adjusted to include an inflation premium, i.e. the money adjusted cost of capital equals to cost of capital plus inflation premium. Now, that means Inflation, when inflation comes in, as far as capital budgeting is concerned, there are two approaches. Two approaches, two approaches of incorporating inflation. One, one, use of, use of adjusted, adjusted, adjusted cash flows, adjusted cash flows, and uh, these are the, the nominal. No, nominal, nominal cash flows, adjusts cash flows with inflation, or two, use of, use of real cash flows, real cash flows, real cash flows, and, and real rate of return, real rate of return, we can use either. So we either use the nominal cash flows and the nominal rate of return, and or we use the real cash flows and the real rate of return. So those are the two options on how to determine or how to incorporate uh, inflation in capital budgeting. Now, when we uh, talk about the nominal cash flows, when we are talking about the nominal cash flows, let me say use of use of the nominal the nominal cash flows and nominal and nominal rate of return rate of return what will be our nominal cash flows the nominal cash flows nominal cash flows will be simply the real cash flows the real cash flows the real cash flows one plus the inflation no you can even say time t there that is the nominal cash flows what is the nominal nominal Nominal, nominal, real, nominal rate of return. The nominal rate of return is, the nominal rate of return is simply the required rate of return. That is the cost of capital. Cost of capital. Is the cost of capital or the real rate of return. That was the nominal rate of return. So if you use the nominal cash flows or the nominal rate of return, these are how you go about it. Now, after you have uh, determined the nominal cash flows, now you discount them. Then determine, determine, determine NPV, NPV using, using the discounted, the discounted nominal nominal cash flows so you determine the npv using the nominal cash flows so these are the items that you need to identify and you move on alternatively alternatively we can use use real use of real real rate of return rate of return real rate of return and real cash flows and real cash flows 
use of real rate of return and real cash flows. If you're using the real rate of return, then we need to determine the real return, the real rate of return. So we take the real rate of return, rate of return, which let me call it R, that will be one plus the nominal rate of return over one plus inflation minus one. That's the real rate of return, where M is the nominal rate, nominal, nominal rate of return, nominal rate of return, and I is the inflation rate, the inflation rate. Now, friends, you need to remember that uh, you, whether you use the nominal cash flows or nominal rate of return, or use the real cash flows or real rate of return, the answer, the NPV should be the same. And you should remember that after you have identified that, now determine, you need to determine, you need to determine the NPV, determine the NPV using, using the real cash flows, real, um, um, let me say, discounted, 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 real cash flows, real cash flows, real cash flows using using the real rate of return real rate of return real rate of return that means that we are going to incorporate inflation once you have uh, uh, determined the real rate of return then use that real rate of return to discount the cash flows then you compute the npv that's important now we we'll want to maybe have an example we'll have want to have two examples, one basic example, just to bring in that fact. Let's say we want an, we do an example. Uh, an example, we say that ABC Limited, ABC Limited, ABC Limited uh, is considering, uh, ABC Limited is considering, 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 The following, uh, considering the cash flow, the, uh, considering a project, considering a project, a project with the following, with the following, with the following features, or with the following, uh, uh, I, with the following cash flows. Let me say with the following cash flows. Remember, this is just a question we are creating here. A simple example that will uh, easily bring the point home here. With the following cash flows, with the following cash flows. So we have the year, we have the year, one, two, three, four, five. Let me put five years. Or even I put the four years only. Then we say about the cash flows. Then we have, um, uh, yeah, the cash flows. Cash flows here will have, uh, let me start from year zero because year zero is also the initial outlay, right? So I don't write it again. Maybe I say something like 200, 200 million, yeah, 200,000. Let me come and say 80,000. We also come and say 90,000. We also come and say 40,000. Then we come and say 10,000. So those are the cash flows. Of course, this initial outlay will be in that order, will be in that order. Maybe I'll also say even year one is a negative. Yeah, that will, uh, no, that will not uh, give us a good picture. Let me just say 10,000, not 10,000. Let me say 15,000. 15,000 is negative, right? So I'm just formulating a question here. Then we, we have been told that the discount the discounting rate, the discounting, uh, the cost of capital. Let's say the cost of capital, the cost of capital is 10%. And inflation, and inflation, and inflation is 8%. That's important. So the cost of capital is 10% and the inflation is 8%. So you can, the required, the required, the required, Determine, determine, determine the NPV, determine the NPV using, 
using uh, using real cash flows real cash flows real cash flows real cash flows or nominal cash flows nominal cash flows we can use both we can use both we test and confirm the npv so that we will see whether it will bring the same the real cash flows or the nominal cash flows so we'll come here and say if you are using the nominal cash flows if you are using use of use of nominal cash flows if you are using the nominal cash flows then what we do first first we determine you know we bring in the cash flow the year the year 0 1 2 3 and 4 then we have the uh, the nominal cash flows here nominal cash flows nominal cash flows will be the real cash flows real cash flows then one one plus that inflation that's how we are going to go about it then we bring in the discounting factor the discounting factor is at 10 percent then we come and now get the present value at the end of the day we'll get the npv directly we'll get our npv we'll get our npv now our nominal cash flows will uh, use our nominal if you use the nominal cash flows then we are simply going to bring in those cash flows a year zero uh zero one the, for year zero, it remained the same, 200,000. Why? Because if you take 200,000 into 1 plus 0 0.08 is the inflation rate, then you raise it by zero. That is one. So if you multiply that, it remain, you know, you bring in this is one, it, will bring, it remain 200,000 as a negative of 200,000. Then we come to year one. Year one is 15,000 is also negative, remember. So we are going to have one plus, uh, uh, let me just do this, you know, let me say negative 15,000, then one plus 0 0.081. So how much would that be? So we come and say uh, 1.08, no, then we, are, we multiply by 15,000. I have a negative of 15, mm, a negative of 15, I need enough space. Let me make it here, 15,000, uh, 1 plus 0 0.08, I have 16,200. Then I'll come to the uh, 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 year 2, year 2 is 90,000 positive, so 1 plus 0 0.08, then 2, what will that be? So 1.08, then we have 2 there, that comes to, then I multiply by, I multiply by the 90, so I'm getting 104, 976. Then I'll come to the third year, 40,000, 40,000, 1 plus 0 0.08, 3, what will that be? So I'll come and say 1.08, then, you know, raised to 3, I multiply that by 40,000, I'm getting 50, that's 50,388. Let me round off that. Then we come and say the final one is 10,000, 10,001 plus 0 0.08, right, for, so what will that be? 1.08. Yeah, 1.08 raised to 4, then I multiply the 10,000. I have 13,604. 05, because of rounding off, let me have it as 05. What is the discounting factor? This definitely will be 0 0.9091. This is 0 0.8264. This is 0 0.7513. This is 0 0.68. Let me confirm that. Just uh, uh, you know, we may forget some of these uh, 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 discounting factors. So that is uh, four. Uh, all right, that is um, negative four. Mm, one point one. That is raised to negative four. I have zero point six eight three. There, I was correct there. Then I I now calculate them. 
I say 16200 by 0.9091. I'm getting 14. Yeah, negative 14. Negative 14. 727 is negative. The next one would be 104. 976 I multiply by 0.8264 so I'll get 86 I'm getting 86752 then the next one will be 50 uh, 388 by 0 0.7513 so I have 37857 then the next one is 13605 by 0.683 then you have 9292. Yeah, round off to that 9292. So I had all those. I say negative 200, negative 200,000. Yeah, there is 14,727. Uh huh. There is a, uh, there is 86,752. There is a 37. That's 7, 8, 57. Then there is 92, 92. We have negative 80. This is negative 80, 826. So this is a negative NPV. We have simply taken the present value of the cash inflows minus the present value of the cash outflows. But the cash flows, we have used the nominal cash flows. Now this is the use of nominal cash flows. Let's also look at the other scenario. Use of use of real cash flows real cash flows if you're going to use the real cash flows then you must determine the real rate of return so you must determine the real rate of return real rate of return friends remember the real rate of return is one plus the nominal rate of return one uh, divided by one plus i inflation rate minus one so let's go directly and get it what is what what is the nominal rate of return 10% that's 0 0.1. Inflation is 0 0.8 here. Is it 0 0.8 or 0 0.08 now? This is 0 0.08. Right. Then I subtract 1. So how much would that come to? That's 1.1. I divide it by 1.08. So I'm getting that and I subtract 1. We are, I'm getting 18.5. So this is 1.8. 85 percent i've already made it in percentage 1.85 percent now from there we'll continue thank you for watching this video don't forget to get yourself a copy of our professionally prepared study text and revision partners visit our shop along tomboya street pioneer house third floor opposite fire station